Hello guys in this session we'll be dealing about an important topic the thalamus it is important in anatomy as well as in physiology today we'll be seeing the introduction of thalamus its gross structure the external features its relations and blood supply of thalamus this part is the anatomy part next is the structure and nuclei connections of nuclei on the functions of thalamus and applied aspect this part is the physiology part first what is thalamus thalamus is an ovoid nuclear mass situated at the core of diencephalon deep to the cerebral cortices and it act as the central hub and its main role is to relay and integrate many motor and sensory impulses between the higher higher centers of the brain and peripheries you will understand this slide when i complete the whole topic okay it's, it's gross structure the thalamus is made up of two symmetrical structures formed from the diencephalon situated on both the sides of the cerebral hemisphere each half of the thalamus is elongated along the anterior posterior axis which gives it an ovoid appearance and it is narrow at the anterior part and expanded or widest at the posterior part and this is called as post expanded posterior part is called as the pulvinar and also the two thalami are connected to each other by an intra interthalamic adhesion which is present in the medial side okay moving on to the external features the thalamus measures 4 cm in the anterior posterior axis and vertically also it measures 4 cm and transversely also it measures 4 cm and thalamus has two ends and four surfaces the two ends are anterior and posterior ends and four surfaces are superior and inferior surface also called as dorsal and ventral surfaces respectively and medial and lateral surfaces now let us look into the relations of the thalamus the anterior relation see this is the medial view of the cerebral hemisphere see this 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 is the thalamus and it is anterior part of thalamus or anterior rim it forms the posterior boundary of interventricular foramen of munro see this part and also it is related to the internal cerebral vein anteriorly interventricular foramen of munro and internal cerebral vein next posterior part as i mentioned it is expanded and also called as pulvinar and it overhangs medial and lateral geniculate bodies and also the superior colliculi this green part is the medial geniculate body this orange color is the lateral geniculate body and the pink color is the superior colliculi next moving on to the medial surface relation this medial surface it forms the lateral wall of third ventricle you can appreciate very clearly in the both the pictures it forms the lateral wall of the third ventricle also in this picture you can appreciate the anterior relations see in the first picture you can see the internal cerebral vein located at the anterior end also the interventricular foramen of munro which is marked by this blue color arrow mark in the second picture moving on to the lateral relation the lateral surface of the thalamus forms the medial boundary of posterior limb of internal capsule see which post internal capsule has three parts the anterior limb the genu and the posterior limb this the mid the thalamic lateral surface of thalamus forms the medial boundary of posterior limb of internal capsule next moving on to the superior surface it is also called as the dorsal surface it is divided into two parts the lateral ventricular part and medial extraventricular part first let us look at the relations of medial extraventricular part the medial part it is related to the tila choroidea of the third ventricle the body of fornix this two pic things you can see in this picture see this is the tila choroidea of the third ventricle or the choroid plexus of third ventricle and body of fornix and also it is related to the caudate nucleus stria terminalis and thalamus striate vein i'll show you next picture see this pink color in the first picture is the stria terminalis actually this stria terminalis separates the lateral surface superior part of the lateral surface of thalamus from the body of caudate nucleus see this is the, it also the superior of the caudate nucleus this blue color and also the thalamus stria thalamus striate vein next lateral part of dorsal surface it forms the floor of central part of lateral ventricle see this blue color on the either side is the lateral ventricle and the floor of the lateral central part of the lateral ventricle is formed by the superior surface of thalamus okay next moving on to this inferior surface or ventral surface it is related to the subthalamus and the hypothalamus this yellow color part is called the is the hypothalamus that's all about its relations moving on to its blood supply 
Thalamus receives the blood supply from a very important artery called the posterior cerebral artery and its branches. Also, the posterior communicating artery through its branches supplies the some part of thalamus. Remember two main arteries, posterior communicating artery and posterior cerebral artery. This posterior cerebral artery is a branch of basilar artery. Yes, moving on to its structure and nuclei. Okay, now thalamus is made consisting of white matter and grey matter. White matter is con consisting of three three things. One is extra extra medullary lamina. It is the thin sheet of white matter which covers the dorsal surface. See this blue, sorry, external lateral surface. I'm sorry. The extra medullary lamina is a thin sheet of white matter covering the lateral surface of thalamus. See this violet color. Next is internal medullary lamina. It is the, see this. You can appreciate a Y shaped. Y shaped white color thing which is called the internal medullary lamina which actually divides the gray matter of thalamus into various nuclei and next is the stratum zonal the stratum zonal is a thin sheet of white matter covering the dorsal surface or superior surface of the thalamus this blue color covering the dorsal surface is the stratum zonal the white matter covering the lateral surface is the external medullary lamina and the internal medullary lamina as a white Y shaped white matter dividing the gray matter of thalamus into various nuclear groups next moving into new gray matter gray matter is divided into three groups of nuclei by y shaped internal medullary lamina the three groups of nuclei that is anatomical groups are anterior group medial group and lateral group okay okay we can see the classification of the nuclei anterior group of nuclei which is present between the two limbs of the y this green color is the anterior nuclear group. Next is lateral group of nuclei. This lateral group of nuclei is further divided into two groups, ventral group and dorsal group. This ventral group is further having many nuclei. They are ventral anterior nucleus, ventral lateral nucleus, ventral posterior lateral, ventral posterior medial and medial and lateral geniculate bodies. It consists of fine nucleus. Next, the dorsal group of nuclei and consists of lateral dorsal nucleus, lateral posterior nucleus and pulvinar. Pulvinar is nothing but the expanded posterior part of the thalamus. Then the medial group of nuclei consists of dorsomedial nuclei, the centromedial nuclei and midline nuclei. This picture is very important and, it's, and it, in exam point of view you can draw this diagram both in anatomy as well as in physiology. Also an ex, a reticular nucleus which is which is present on the lateral side, it is separated by the external medullary lamina from the thalamus. This reticular nucleus forms the main part of the reticular activating system and plays a major role. Okay, now let us discuss the functional classification. Okay, functionally, it is divided broadly into two non specific projection nuclei and specific projection nuclei. Under non specific projection, we have midline nuclei and centromedian nuclei. Why it is called non specific? Because these two nuclei receive impulses for, impulses for diffuse secondary secondary sense receptors from reticular activating system and project diffusely to whole part of the neocortex. That is, generally, they are related to general arousal system. Okay, moving on to specific projection nuclei, it is called specific because they receive specific sensory impulses and project to specific part of neocortex. So they are called specific projection nuclei. They are divided into three. First is sense specific sensory relay nuclei. These three nuclei is mainly associated with relaying of sensory impulses. They are medial geniculate body, lateral geniculate body and ventral posterior or posterior ventral group of nuclei. Next is the motor control nuclei. These two nuclei are important as the motor impulses are relayed through this two group of nuclei. They are ventral lateral and ventral anterior group of nuclei. Then third group is nuclei with higher function. They are anterior group of nuclei, dorsal lateral nuclei, the pulvinar, lateral posterior and dorsomedial nucleus. Okay, we will discuss the connections and functions of each of these nuclei separately. First, ventral posterior lateral nucleus. This nucleus is important sensory relay nucleus and it receives afferent from spinothalamic tract of contralateral side. Remember the dorsal column pathway the spinothalamic fibers, spinothalamic tract carrying the sensation of touch, pain, touch, pressure, vibration, all it arises, it moves to the contralateral side at the medullary level and reaches the contralateral thalamus. 
so it receives impulses from spinothalamic tract and medial lemniscus and project to the sensory cortex that is area 312 ventral posterior medial nucleus it receives general sensation along face via the trigeminothalamic tract it is also from the contralateral side and project to and project to the sensory cortex that is area number 312 via the posterior limb of internal capsule that you should remember the ventral posterior medial and ventral posterior lateral are general carry or the nuclei for sensory relay nucleus yes next is lateral geniculate body lateral geniculate body receives projections of optic tract from both the eyes both the eyes for ex- let us say let us take optic tract of right side the optic tract of right side has temporal fibers from the same side and nasal fibers from the opposite side it project to the lateral geniculate body and from the lateral geniculate body of thalamus body of thalamus it projects to the primary visual cortex that is broadband's area 17 18 and 19 so lateral geniculate body is for relay of optic sensations optic tracts next moving on to medial geniculate body it receives topographically organized projections from auditory fibers from cochlear nerve and inferior colliculus and it projects to primary auditory cortex area number 41 and 42 in the cerebrum so it is related with auditory function so we have completed the four nucleus ventral posterior lateral nucleus which receives spinothalamic tract ventral posterior medial nucleus which receives trigeminothalamic tract lateral geniculate body receiving optic sensations medial geniculate body receiving auditory sensations that's all about sensory relay nucleus next moving on to the motor relay nucleus first is ventral anterior nucleus ventral anterior nucleus has programming of movements controlled by basal ganglia its main role is programming of movements controlled by basal ganglia it receives up afferents from substantia nigra globus pallidus and also from cerebellum and projects to premotor and prefrontal cortex and also to primary motor area okay it is the nucleus of motor control next ventral lateral nucleus it is the chief nucleus for cerebellar control of motor functions it receives afferents from globus pallidus substantia nigra and dentate nucleus of cerebellum from the contralateral side and it projects to the supplementary motor area that is area number 6 and primary motor cortex area number 4 remember the chief nuclei for motor control of cerebellum is ventral lateral and the two motor control nuclei are ventral lateral and ventral anterior next moving on to the mo- nuclei of higher function the first nuclei is anterior nucleus the anterior nucleus receives fibers from mammillary nucleus that is it forms the part of mammillothalamic tract the fibers that receive mammil the fibers from hippocampus projects to mammillary nucleus from mammillary nucleus the fibers projects to anterior nucleus of thalamus from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus the fibers projects to cingulate gyrus it is an important part of papi circuit and it is very important for recent memory and emotions remember the anterior nucleus is important for reason memory and emotions next is the pulvinar remember it is the expanded posterior part of the thalamus pulvinar it, it is remain role as integration of visual auditory and other sensations which receive from lateral geniculate body medial geniculate body superior colliculus and projects to prefrontal um, parietal occipital and temporal cortex main role main role is inter- integration of visual auditory and other senses whenever there is lesion in the pulvinar nuclei there is visuo spatial defects next is dorso medial nucleus very important nucleus it has reciprocal connections with intralaminar nucleus also reciprocally it's connected to prefrontal cortex so it is very important nucleus which is important for emotion affect and behavior and it pa- and it forms a part of limbic system remember it is the nucleus of behavior affect and emotion and it forms the part of limbic system next is the centromedial nucleus this nucleus as i said is the non specific connection and is reciprocally connected to motor areas and it receives input from globus pallidus and it project diffusely to putamen caudate nucleus or also to motor cortex 
main role is general arousal system okay that's all about the connections of specific nucleus this table uh, gives you a summary of the afferent efferent and functions of each nuclei you can go through this also this all this slide is also the same thing giving the afferent connection efferent connection and functions of each nucleus of thalamus okay now let us moving on to the functions of thalamus see if you remember the new each nucleus you can easily give the functions okay we'll correlate the functions and nucleus of thalamus okay first function thalamus is the sensory relay center sensory nucleus are four in number ventral posterior lateral receiving spinothalamic tract which has which has touch pain vibration sensations and also from the general sensation from the face via the trigeminothalamic tract next is relay of special senses via the lateral geniculate body the visual sensation is carried via the medial geniculate body auditory sensation are carried next for center for crude sensation also in thalamus crude touch crude temperature and pain are appreciated very well next center for integration of motor functions remember the two motor control nuclei ventral lateral and ventral anterior they receive output from the basal ganglia and cerebellum before projecting it to the cerebellum and controls the motor functions okay by receiving the output from basal ganglia and cerebellum they control the motor functions and project to the specific part of cerebrum next part role in alertness and arousal phenomena it is mainly through the non specific nuclear connections next role in emotional aspect emotional i said the important nucleus is dorso medial nucleus which is controlling the emotion affect and behavior and it forms the main part of limbic system and it has reciprocal connection with prefrontal cortex remember next role in memory memory is a part of pepi circuit which is a uh, mamelothalamic tract receiving impulses from the hippocampus and it sending to cingulate gyrus and it forms the main part of memory next is it has a role also in synchronization of electroencephalogram then there is role in sleep wakeful cycle Uh, it is via the reticular system and thalamus is also a important center for integration of visceral and somatic function so remember this 10 function if you correlate each function and each nuclei you will remember it very easily okay now we'll see a case see a 64 year old right handed hypertensive man notes the onset of numbness on the left side of his body there is numbness in the left side of the body along with clumsiness clumsiness of his left hand improving over several hours when first seen several days later his evidence of dense left hemisensory disturbance involving pain and temperature appreciation that is he is unable to appreciate pain and temperature and position sense is intact okay mri of this person shows right thalamic stroke a very important point to note here is that the mri shows right thalamic stroke but the symptoms or signs shown above are of left side i'll explain you why then two weeks after the development of this hemi sensory disturbance he notes the spontaneous onset of severe burning pain in left upper extremity note this point burning pain in left upper extremity on the left side of the trunk and to a lesser extent in left lower extremity okay at this point he still exhibits decreased pain and temperature appreciation as on the internal examination there is no marked over reaction to noxia stimuli even when a small stimulus is given he is over reacting marked over reaction to noxia stimuli in the left arm and trunk okay, if see you can note an important point here mri shows right thalamic stroke but the symptoms is all of left thalamus left left side of the body why okay, remember thalamus whenever it receives sensory impulses the spinothalamic tract or trigeminothalamic tract of right side or left or right side any side it moves to the contralateral thalamus that is the right side of the fibers from the right side moves to the left thalamus and the fibers from the left side moves to the right thalamus so in this case all the fibers carrying the sensory impulses from the sens sensations from the left side move to the contralateral thalamus that is the right thalamus so whenever there is a stroke of right thalamus the sensations from the left side are affected that is what the case is explaining you okay let us move on to what is the syndrome the syndrome is called thalamic syndrome or dejerine rose syndrome or thalamic pain syndrome 
note it is a very important 10 mark question asked in the exam it can be asked as thalamic pain syndrome or thalamic syndrome or digerent rose syndrome or they can give you the symptoms and ask this ask the case okay first let us see what is the cause damage to ventro posterior lateral nucleus what is this nucleus this nucleus is a sensory specific sensory relay nucleus it occurs due to thrombosis of posterior lateral branch of posterior cerebral artery because posterior cerebral artery is the chief artery of the blood supply of thalamus okay what all symptoms we can see there is astereognosis that is you cannot appreciate tactile discrimination or tactile localization there is loss of all sensations see the case here there is onset numbness on the left side of the body there is left hemisensory disturbance you cannot appreciate pain and temperature this is what this is what we can say as loss of all sensations next there is thalamic phantom limb what is thalamic phantom limb understand it clearly see whenever we ask the person to close the eyes and point towards his limb he cannot do it whenever he is giving thalamic phantom limb there is thalamic overreaction what is thalamic overreaction see in this patient also we can see marked overreaction to noxious stimuli this is called thalamic overreaction understood we have four sensory symptoms astereognosis loss of all sensations thalamic phantom limb and thalamic overreaction next we'll see the motor symptoms there is ataxia there is decreased muscle tone as motor area is also affected there is involuntary movements whenever globus pallidus is affected we have chorea chorea is nothing but quick jerky movements of the hand and atetosis is nothing but slow rhythm movements whenever the fibers from globus pallidus is affected we have this involuntary movements there is intentional tremor also seen next an important symptom is thalamic hand or atetoid hand here the hand of the finger person sorry person as the wrist is moderately flexed and the fingers are hyper extended so whenever the patient presents with moderate flexion of wrist with hyper extended fingers we say it as athetoid hand or thalamic hand so that's all about thalamic syndrome and the thalamus and moving on to thalamus it is very important 10 mark both in anatomy and physiology the nucleus can be asked as four mark in both the subjects functions of thalamus is an important 10 mark in physiology thalamic syndrome is also an important 10 mark in physiology thank you